Flemish Clacket. We now broadcast a programme of an unusual kind, which was first heard on this network in 1968. This is the BBC third programme. Here is Hugo Turvey to introduce tonight's performance by the Skoda Polyphonica Nisdeniensis. The Skoda Polyphonica Nisdeniensis was formed just after the war and it's been hard at work ever since getting to grips with their instruments. The three instruments you're going to hear tonight. It will be about the first time any of them have been heard for about 400 years because the Shagbaps, the Minikin and the Flemish Clacket the three instruments which make up this consort have been obsolete since the early 16th century. And of course there are those who hold the view that it would have been rather better if they had remained so, as it were. It's a fascinating debate and no doubt many of you will have been following the correspondence about it in the Musikalische Kunstwissenschaftliche Quartage. Now, uh, just to tell you a little about the instruments, the uh, shagbutt here is a two-man trombone, rather like the steam-driven Trillian Vogel horn of the later 18th century. My grappling rod. Very complex instrument with many uh, we convolutions. And, well, about 25 yards of um, goes round and round. But it's made of boiled leather and pewter and boxwood and tar. It's quite a job to assemble for performance. You can hear our two shagbutt players hard at work at it, just finished. The shagbutt then. Two mouthpieces, two bells, about 25 yards of boiled leather, played from both ends simultaneously with the slide work by levers, pulleys and grappling irons. You'll uh, notice a rather odd sound as our two players move about, a kind of uneven thumping. This is because they both wear, but on one foot only, the plug flum. That's uh, a special kind of medieval Flemish snow boot made of fur. Now, there's a special point in these plug flumpen by what English players use to term grommeling, that is, by both stuffing your plug flub and up the shag butt, you can get a totally different tone quality. A rather surprise sort of sound. But of course this demands great skill. You can imagine balancing on one leg, blowing and operating at the same time the long grappling iron which works the slide on a push-pull principle. Uh, we hope to demonstrate that in a moment. But now, uh, Peter Weevil and John Throgmorton, the two shagbutt players, have got the shagbutt finally assembled and they're going to start warming up. It takes a lot of blowing to build up the necessary pressure before the shagbutt will sound, and even then, at first, the notes take some time to go round and round the 25 yards of boiled leather before they emerge from the two mouths of the instrument. Hard work, this. You have to get the timing just right, or you may get what John Dunstable describes as bunching. That is, the kind of backfire in which the note goes into reverse and has to be swallowed by the player. It can be quite dangerous. Ah, here comes our first note. There we are, about three notes of fairly indeterminate pitch. Or four on a dry day with the wind behind them. And now they're going to do some grumbling. There go the pop flumpen. That's about there, I'm afraid. It can easily happen when you're grumbling. You just have to hang on tight and... Yes, there it goes all the way. Ah, there we are. Now, all a shake butt player can do when this happens is hang on tight and debouch, letting it come gradually out of his ears. There we go. Well, now, we'll leave the shag butt. And I'll just have a word or two about the minikin, played by Tashiana Splunk. The minikin, which is a kind of very elongated variant of the virgins, about six yards long, from the keyboard here to the string. Yeah. It has a rather particularly complicated mechanism, too. If you'd uh, just give us a note, Madam Splunk. Spirit! Uh, Spirit. Not so. Thank you so much. There aren't, unfortunately, any breaks, as it were, on the minikin, and if you strike more than one note, you simply have to go on to the end of the piece, or you like to the um, Now, you see that it's, uh, it's pressed the key, and the trip hammer engaged with the snatch drop there, and the two pairs of the gyro parts begin to spin round. Then you can see a series of toggle bobbins. Ah, there goes the main sponge, made of minor sponges. It takes exactly how long, madam? Well, 30 
Oh yes, a minute between pressing the key and actually getting the notes stuck on the corresponding string at the other end. The gibbering string is going nicely now. Now <coughs> well, this means that the Minikin player always has to start one minute for the rest. Ah, the counter boom knocks up the wooden flaps in kit, which in turn releases the delicate metal splinters. And sometimes you can get a kind of backfire effect here too, if the quill gets the wrong side of the plugging over. And then you get a kind of a bow and arrow effect. And now the gimbal revolves, up pops the tuna arm, hits the jack down and says, Look out! Ah! Oh, wait, wait on me! Yes, well, we, we'd better pass on now to the Flemish Cracker. This is perhaps the largest of the Blue family. In fact, it's uh, about 15 feet high. Completely pear shaped, all round, all body and all cylindrical. It's quite a niche among instruments of this kind. It has been placed in the inside. There's a small trap door up towards the top there, and the pair has to climb up the small ladder and lower himself into the bed. It's rather like business to get in and out. Oh, you can hear when they can't pass and squeeze themselves through now. There it goes. Right, this is to get in and There is some evidence in the Jewish packet, but designed by Hieronymus Bosch by mistake, but I don't really think. Well, well, it, it, it has some 16 sympathetically vibrating strings, and has one string that can actually tune. And this has to jump from the outside by means of two long murmuring rods, which connect to a hocket and ratchet mechanism on top of the packet. Now you can hear Rene Cobb Thompson calling out to his tuner, H.P. Hogg, for rather complicated instructions for the pocketing and glassing process, which tightly involves Latin's attention and the bottom string as the main string for. Very difficult to get the Flemish packet tuned accurately. And the thing you have to watch for when you're playing is contra crunching. That is, if you get the flop and string tuned just that bit too high, then under certain circumstances the flatter can suddenly an inflow as it were. And this can be, of course, extremely painful for the clacket player. Now, while the uh, Flemish clacket has just been brought up for concert pitch, uh, why not you about the piece which the Scola Polyphonica Lise Deniensis is going to perform? It's attributed to uh, Huckball, the one-legged of Grobhausen, and entitled Haro Popsgeren ist das Wiesenlungenschnitt. And there are, of course, strong grounds for arguing that it is, in fact, the 15th century original of our Pop Goes the Weasel, the Earth Weasel. Against this, it's been argued, first, that Huckball, the one-legged, was unable to write music anyhow. Uh, the words of the original song, which are extant in another manuscript, don't seem to be in the same tradition as those of Pop Goes the Weasel. In fact, they run, Ah, me, my face is green as a quince, and all because of the cruelty of love. My lady is so fair, but whenever I attempt to declare my devotion, she hits me on the kneecap with an iron-shod club. Can it be that in some way I have offended her? Now, of course, these are tricky questions to sort out, and for the time at my disposal now, I can't even begin. But I don't think they need to spoil our enjoyment of this really rather remarkable little piece, which has a remarkable freshness of invention and displays... displays excuse me one moment. Look, would you please give me a Excuse me, we've had a slight technical hitch. Uh, owing to a slight misunderstanding, Cassianus Plurd has started playing the Minikin slightly before we really intended. It's just one moment. Look, we've got to go on. I do apologise for this slight uh, bit of trouble we run into, but I, I think that with a bit of luck we'll... Uh... The first performance of the newly discovered work of Huckball, the one-legged of Grobhausen, Haro Popskian ist das Wieselungensied.
That performance of Haro, Pops Gehen, Ist das Wieselungens Lied by Huckball the One Legged of Grobhausen was given by the Skoda Ponyphonica Nies de Nies. Shh, shh. What? Um, we apologize to listeners for the technical hitches in the performance. These were partly due to the fact that Mr. Turvey and the Skoda Polyphonica got stuck in the lift, actually, and their places have been taken at very short notice by Rolf Lefever, Wilfred Carter, Peter Baldwin, uh, Francis de Wolf, John Baddeley, and Marjorie Westbury. The substitute Shagbutt, Minikin and Clackett were lent by BBC Radiophonic Workshop and made by David Kane to the designs of Michael Mason. And might one add, introduced by Alva Liddell.